1-800-636-0953. You can watch both sides of the story live on the Durban Malcolm Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at both sides 106. Email both sides 106 at live.com. Send your WhatsApp voice notes, all your messages, and text messages to 876 365 3346. Remember, we have two ears and one mouth, so we can listen twice as much as we speak. So stay with us as we listen to Both Sides of the Story. Both Sides of the Story. <laughs> Knowledge is power. Classes in session, hour 106. If we were base enough to desire it, it is now too late to retire from the contest. There is no retreat but in submission and slavery. Our chains are forged. Their clanking may be heard on the plains of Boston. The war is inevitable, and let it come. I repeat, sir, let it come. It is in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand, he why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it. Almighty God, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. In a little tent, oh, and just like the river, I never put in every sense. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know the change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die. Cause I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know the change won't come. Oh, yes, it will. I go to the movie and I go down town. Somebody keep telling me, don't hang around. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know. Change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Then I go to my brother and I say, Brother, help me, please. <laughs> but he winds up. Not in me. Back down on my knees. Oh, there's been times that I thought I couldn't last. But 
Now I think I'm able to carry on. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change will come. Oh, yes, it will. <clears throat> Sam Cook, a change is gonna come. And before that, the words of Patrick Henry Give me liberty or give me death. That's the opening combination for this afternoon's edition of your program, Both Sides of the Story, Power 106 FM. Still streaming live on the Gleaners website, go-jamaica.com. It's still the International Decade of Healthy Aging, the International Decade of Ecosystem Restoration, the International Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development, the Decade of Action for Road Safety, and the UN International Decade of Indigenous Languages. It's the seventh day of the third month of 2024. And we welcome those of you just tuning in and others who have been standing by waiting for us to join. Welcome. Here in Jamaica and in the United States, the month of March is being observed as Intellectual Disabilities Awareness Month. Also in the U.S., March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, Endometriosis Awareness Month, and Salt Awareness Month. And in the U.K., March is also Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Hoy es jueves, el 7 de marzo 2024, y les saludamos en cualquier parte del mundo que nos están escuchando en este momento. Estamos muy agradecidos por el don de la vida y el privilegio de servirles en otra edición de su programa both sides of the story, ambos lados de la historia. Nunca vamos a tomar su audiencia por sentado, porque sabemos que ustedes tienen otras opciones. Y esta es la razón por la cual jamás olvidamos darle las gracias por elegir both sides of the story, ambos lados de la historia, de lunes a viernes desde las dos hasta las cinco de la tarde. Aquí en Power 106 FM, la misión continua para educar, capacitar, iluminar y estimular el espíritu empresarial. Bienvenidos. <laughs> Jeudi le 7 mars 2024, et nous vous saluons tous qui nous écoutez ou que vous soyez dans le monde. Nous sommes reconnaissants du don de la vie ainsi que du privilège d'être votre service pour une nouvelle édition de votre programme Both Sides of the Story, le pour et le contre. Nous ne considérons pas votre fidélité comme à l'un de soi parce que nous savons que vous avez l'embarras du choix. C'est pourquoi nous n'oublions jamais de vous remercier de choisir d'écouter Both Sides of the Story, le pour et le contre, du lundi au vendredi de 2h à 5h de l'après-midi sur notre antenne Power 106 FM. Nous continuons notre mission d'éduquer, d'habiliter, d'éclairer et d'encourager l'esprit d'entreprise. Bienvenue. All we're saying is it's Thursday, the 7th 
of March 2024. And we greet you well, wherever in the world you are listening to us right now. We remain eternally grateful for the gift of life and the privilege to serve you on yet another edition of your program, Both Sides of the Story. We don't ever take your listenership for granted because we know you have choices. And that's why we never, ever forget to remember to say thanks for choosing to listen to both sides of the story, Monday to Friday, 2 to 5, right here on Power 106 FM. The mission continues to educate, empower, enlighten, and encourage entrepreneurship. Welcome. And I say, brother, help me, please. But he winds up knocking me. I Good afternoon to those of you listening to us on 106.1, 106.3, 106.5, 106.7, and 106.9. From Moran Point to Negril Point, from the Goat Islands to Galena Point. This is Power 106 FM, serving Jamaica and the diaspora. Hello to those tuned in via the Power 106 FM app, which you have downloaded from the App Store or the Google Play Store, depending on the nature of your device. Downloading is free. Listening is free whenever, wherever. We thank those who have dialed a designated number from the United States or the United Kingdom. If you're in the United States and you wish to dial a number to listen to Power 106 FM, you can call 631 631- 359-8281, 631-359-8281. We're streaming live video on the Durban Malcolm Facebook page. If you're not there yet, log on to Facebook. If not, stay tuned. We'll tell you more. You're listening to Power 106 FM. The time is now 2.15. Are you passionate about agriculture? Join hands with the Jamaica 4-H Clubs, the leading youth organization dedicated to supporting the next generation of youth participants in agriculture. Unleash your agricultural potential through our stimulatory and mastery level training, enterprise support programs, tractor operation and maintenance, along with our agricultural scholarships and bursaries to help you achieve your academic goals. Stay connected. Follow us on social media today at Jamaica for each class. Oh, yes, it will. I go to the movie and I go outside. Somebody. Good afternoon to those of you listening to us on 106.1, 106.3, 106.5. 106.7 and 106.9 from Moran Point to Galena Point. You know the drill. We thank you so much for making it both sides of the story here on Power 106 FM. We're taking your calls on 876 922 to 5. 876 922 to 5. What's on your mind this afternoon? The lines are open. Also, you have the text line, which is the same as the WhatsApp number, 876-365-3346, 876-365-3346. And, uh, of course, we'll be giving you the usual updates as the program progresses and information becomes available. We crave your indulgence, though, as we... We join in paying tribute to renowned public relations executive, Marcia Erskine. And uh, the story is as follows. 
as the Jamaican tourism family mourns the loss of Marcia Erskine, an esteemed public relations practitioner and communications consultant for the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, JHTA, Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Edmund Bartlett, has extended his deepest condolences to the family, friends, and colleagues of Ms. Erskine. Reflecting on Ms. Erskine's significant contribution to Jamaica's tourism industry, Minister Bartlett said, today we say goodbye to a remarkable individual whose dedication and expertise greatly enriched Jamaica's tourism landscape. A Trinidadian by birth, Marcia carved a distinguished career path and legacy in journalism and public relations locally that cannot be questioned. He added that on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism and its public bodies and the entire tourism family, I offer deep condolences as we hold up Marcia's family and friends in prayerful support during the difficult hour. And those of you who are familiar with the work behind the scenes, you would have come across the name more, more than once because she has played her part as well in terms of in terms of curating uh, interviews and interview segments from behind the scenes. Born in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, Marcia Erskine pursued her education at the University of the West Indies. She commenced her career in journalism, leaving an indelible mark on publications like the Trinidad Guardian and the Trinidad Express between 1974 and 1978, before joining the Gleaner in 1981. However, beyond her journalistic endeavors, Marcia played a pivotal role in the Gleaner's Hospitality Jamaica Awards as a member of the advisory committee. She also established her public relations firm, Marcia Erskine and Associates Limited, based in Kingston, which she operated until her death. Minister Bartlett highlighted Marcia's unwavering commitment to the tourism sector, saying Marcia was more than a communications consultant. She was a passionate advocate for brand Jamaica. Her contribution to the execution of major calendar events like JPEX and Tourism Awareness Week showcased her commitment to elevating Jamaica's global tourism appeal. In paying tribute to her devotion to destination Jamaica over the decades, Minister Bartlett continued, Marcia's sudden passing and absence leave a void in the hearts of those who had the privilege of working alongside her. Her impact on the Jamaican tourism family will be sorely missed. May her soul rest in peace. Every sense it's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change won't come. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too hard to live it, but I'm afraid to die. I won't do us a bad the sky. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change won't come. Oh, yes, it will. I go to the movie. Thanks a lot for staying with us here on your program, Both Sides of the Story, Power 106 FM, still streaming live on the Gleaners website, go-jamaica.com. 
And on behalf of the entire RGR Gleaner Communications Group, we convey our condolences to our family, friends, colleagues, neighbors, and fellow practitioners. We want to thank the, those of you who have joined us and have been expressing your deepest condolences as well. Faye Weller says, my deepest condolences to Miss Marcia, family and friends. And uh, Valerie Weller Carpeck says, blessed afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Faye Weller. Thank you as usual for tuning in. Good to have you on board. Penelope Prendergast says, good afternoon. Petro E says, good afternoon, Mr. Malcolm and crew. Hope this day finds you all in good spirit. We're trying our best. And a couple of messages from yesterday before we roll into today's messages. Cuban in Georgia says, Sir Malcolm, I agree with the caller. Jamaica has sold out its neighbors, Haiti, people to the West. It's a big shame and disgrace, says Cuban in Georgia. Horace, otherwise known as Spider, says, Mr. Malcolm, that individual is still in the news up to yesterday, so we can't hide our heads in the sand. What about the ambulance, Mr. Malcolm? You guys get it off the wharf yet? Yes, indeed. It's been off the wharf for a, a uh, I can't give the specific date, but for a little while now, it's up and running. The ambulance is up and running, courtesy of Jaja Foundation, Jamaicans abroad, helping Jamaicans at home. Thanks to all those who made it possible. Sharon Smith of the Osemati Alumni Association New York chapter is in touch with us as usual. Franklin McDonald in Guelph, Canada shares a link to a story. Institute of Jamaica launches Earth Day competition. And Bob Ritchie in Minnesota, Minnesota, Minneapolis says, hello, Brother Durban, is everything okay? You usually reply within 48 hours, says Bob Ritchie. That's just a function of the, the load, the workload. That's a function of the workload, Bob Ritchie, so it is, which is not usually easily seen <laughs> unless you know. If you don't know, you don't know. And uh, thank you very much for the update, Bob Ritchie, in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'll usually mix them up. You get it. You know what I'm talking. And uh, Joseph Small encouraging stakeholders under the stewardship of Bureau of Standards Jamaica to join the virtual launch of the Good Agricultural Practices Standard. I'm sure Althea McKenzie is on top of this one already. And that's a, that's a, a webinar that is coming up. Wait a minute. Oh, that, that, sorry about that. That was this morning. This morning it was, and via Zoom. Sorry, we missed that one, but we have a lot more ground to cover. Good afternoon to Barry. And Kevin Galloway has joined us as well. And uh, let's see if we're up to date now yet, are we? 
Love Groove Music saying good afternoon. This is from Calvin Hodge. So we're up to date now. We're on today's page. This one says, good afternoon, Dervon. There was no violence. No, we're not going to go down that road right now, quite frankly. Not going to go down that road. I don't know. Well, let me not say anything more right now. Let's put that on pause for the time being. Everything doesn't ha does doesn't need to be of a controversial nature. Whatever happened to a friendly conversation. This message says, Dervon, Richard in Yonkers, New York, listening to your wonderful program. You're very kind, Richard. Thank you very much for your message. Good to have you on board. And Ricardo Porteous says, my condolences to the family of Marcia Erskine. And we join you in that regard as we have shared already, Ricardo. Let's take a look at a couple of the, somebody was referring to Haiti earlier on, one of the messages, who was that? Making a point about Haiti. Where did that message go? But essentially there's a, there was a, where is it? Uh, some kind of development. Haiti's new power brokers move towards installing new government. That's the latest coming out of Haiti. And uh, we're seeing a picture right now of men in either long sleeve shirts or jackets. And they seem to be ready for something. Haiti's new power brokers move towards installing new government. Here's the story coming out of Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Haiti's most publicized gang leader has warned of a genocide should Prime Minister... Well, let's come back to that in a moment. You're listening to Power 106 FM. The time is now. If you now want to get a 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 get Join us weekdays from 6 to 8 p.m. for Power Play, Power 106 FM's flagship program dedicated to the world of sports. Well, we will enjoy the content of the edition of Power Play. Power Play with Cliff Williams, focusing on everything sports in Jamaica and around the world. Make sure to tune in to Power Play, providing invigorating sports analysis and discussion. Weekdays from 6 to 8 p.m. on Power 106 FM and the Power 106 FM app. The sky. It's been a long so this is this is a serious matter because Haiti's publicized gang leader has warned of a genocide should Prime Minister Dr. Ariel Henry be allowed to return to power in Haiti even as he remains stranded in Puerto Rico, unable to return to the troubled French-speaking CARICOM country. Jimmy Cherizier, alias Barbecue, who has been acting as the chief of operations for the armed criminal gangs that are seeking to overthrow the government, warned today, Wednesday, of a genocide should Henri persist in his efforts to remain in power. If Ariel Henry does not step down, if the international community continues to support him, there will be a civil war which would end in a genocide in Haiti, 
Cherizier told reporters. The U.S., Canada, France, and the whole group of Western ambassadors known as Core Group will be solely responsible for the deaths which would follow a decision to allow Henri to remain in power in Haiti. Toppling Henri's government is a first step in our struggle towards est establishing a new system which would take into account the social interests of the Haitian people. After getting rid of Henri, we'll make sure that the country is led by a strong government and that there is a strong justice system, he added. Cherisier told, Cherisier told reporters that our immediate goal is to look for government ministers and those supporting Ariel Henry. If anybody knows where they may be found, we want to know, so we may go after them, he said. Henri is now stranded in Puerto Rico after having traveled to Kenya, where he signed an agreement allowing for the UN Security Council sanctioned international force led by the African country to restore peace and security in his troubled country. But the criminal gangs that have all but taken over the capital Port-au-Prince said a new government would soon be installed with a judge, Durand Dure Jr., as chairman assisted by former rebel leader and former police commissioner, Guy Philippe, and Françoise Saint-Ville Villiers from the religious sector. Haiti's new de facto rulers have been over the past couple of days increasing their efforts to hasten the process towards installing a new presidential council to lead the country. Dozens of political parties and organizations have decided on Wednesday today to affix their signatures to an agreement document presented to them by the anti-government movement. The outspoken and leftist political leader, Jean-Charles Moïse, said that preparations are well underway to install the new rulers of Haiti. The government has decided to flee, and in the face of the vacuum, we, as responsible politicians, have to act, Moïse told the radio station Radio Télé Éclair today. The Prime Minister has taken flight. The police chief has gone into hiding. Government ministers have dug a hole where they've decided to conceal themselves, said Moïse, promising to chase them everywhere. We've told hotels not to welcome fleeing government officials, and we've also warned their families and friends not to accept to take them in to avoid problems, he added. Moïse said the judge who will preside over the council will soon engage in consultations with relevant national and international entities in the hope of establishing various partnerships in the country. Earlier, CARICOM said it had not been able to reach any form of consensus regarding the situation in Haiti, despite working on the issue over the past three days. Despite many, many meetings, we have not yet been able to reach any form of consensus between the government and respective stakeholders in the opposition, the private sector, civil society, and religious organizations CARICOM chairman and Guyana's president, Dr. Irfan Ali, said in a video statement. He described the unfolding situation in Haiti, which is part of the 15-member regional integration movement, as complex with many moving parts. It is compounded by the absence of key institutions functioning, such as the presidency and the parliament. This is further undermined by the outbreaks of violence and a lack of humanitarian aid, Ali said. He said CARICOM has been urging all Haitian stakeholders of an urgent need for a consensus, given that they all agree that the, situ the solution must be 
Haitian led and Haitian born. Consensus and getting a consensus is therefore of paramount importance, Ali said, adding that CARICOM recognizes that there must be a political solution to anchor any stabilization of a security and humanitarian effort. A little lengthy, but it's a story that's in the news now, so we felt compelled to give you a little more than the headlines. Oh, and there's an updated story. Haitian PM arrives in Puerto Rico after long absence as he struggles to get home to quell violence. And uh, criminal armed gangs claim power in Haiti, vow installation of new government. And there's also a report of gangs in Haiti trying to seize control of the main airport. Three in four 15 year olds in Latin America and the Caribbean unable to demonstrate foundational math skills is another of the stories. And uh, Haiti orders a curfew after gangs overrun its two largest prisons. Well, we had heard of the first jailbreak or prison break. Now it's two. And Antigua's Senate has approved a bill to increase fees to transfer money overseas. And you can read on and get some more of the story, but that's just a taste of what's happening news-wise in this part of the world, at least what that which we are aware of. In the meantime, let's keep it going. Still taking your calls on 876-922-4112-5. Text line, same as the WhatsApp number. 876-365-3346. Barbara Hart says, hey, Dervon, hey, Sir Malcolm, good afternoon to you and your um, our amazing diaspora, your hardworking team. Oh, the music is fantastic as always, my brother. Thank you for always reminding us how great and lovely our beautiful little rock Jamaica is. Thanks, Sir D. You're welcome. Barbara Hart says as well, my sincere condolences to the family and friends of Ms. Marcia Erskine. Her beautiful, may her beautiful soul be at peace, R.I.P., writes Barbara Hart. Natalie in Washington Gardens says, Good afternoon, all. Encourage our men to get their regular prostate test, knowing early your status can save your life. And that is true. All right, let's clear a few more messages right now. 876-365-3346. 876-365-3346. Let's see what you've got for us on our text line, same as the WhatsApp number, 876-365-3346. Eight seven six three six five three three four six. Love Groove Music saying good afternoon, Dervan Calvin Hodge. Calvin Hodge Lake from Love Groove Music Publishing Company, VMI USA. Latest international news: massive strikes cripple air and rail travel across Germany for better pay due to the rising cost of living. As you 
have always said, people must unite and put their concerns into action. The talk shop is not going to get us anywhere. Bless up, Calvin Lake. Thank you very much for your sharing your thoughts with us, Calvin Hodge Lake. Thank you. Let's keep it going here on your program, both sides of the story, Paro 106 FM. Still streaming live on the Gleaners website, go-jamaica.com. Live on your smart devices all over the world. And we're glad you could join us. Uh, quite a few more have joined us. Apart from Ricardo in Glengoff, St. Catherine, Hubert Fowlin has joined us online saying good afternoon to Mr. Dervan Malcolm, both sides of the story and Power 106 and your listening audience. Good afternoon, Hubert Fowlin. Sky Lawson, sending love. Good afternoon, Sky Lawson. Mikey Morris says good afternoon, Mr. Malcolm, to you and your grateful listening audience. Thank you very much, Mikey Morris who says, greetings to your staff of Power 106 FM radio station. Thank you very much on their behalf. Mikey Morris says, I like that greeting. Sam Cook change is going to come. Well, Mr. Malcolm, things can't be the same forever. Velta Wilson is greeting us as well. So too, Mikey Morris saying both sides of the story. Another Thursday afternoon. Welcome again, Mr. Malcolm. Thank you very much, Mikey Morris. Enough blessings to you too. Mikey Morris in the Bronx in New York. Andrea Peart Flores says, good afternoon all. Beautiful breeze in Mandeville. Hope all is well. Paul Miles of the eponymous Paul Miles Foundation is greeting us as well. So too, Faye Weller and Barbara Hart. Thank you very much for your messages and all the very best. Let's get ready for another break here on both sides of the story and come back in just a moment. You're listening to Power 106 FM. The time is now 2.45. <laughs> Tune into Power 106 FM for Power and Glory every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Power and Glory with the extraordinary Alvin McKenzie. Join us for the inspired word and reflections, as well as soul-stirring gospel music every Sunday with Alvin McKenzie from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Power and Glory on Power 106 FM, the Power 106 FM app, One Spot Media, at go-jamaica.com. <laughs> Thanks a lot for staying with us here on your program, Both Sides of the Story, Power 106 FM. Still taking your calls on 876-922-4112-5. That's 876-922-4112-5. And the text line is the same as the WhatsApp number, 876-365-3346, 876-365-3346. Good afternoon. Thanks for calling. Good afternoon, Mr. Professor Dervan Malcolm. Good afternoon, Mr. Carter. Mr. Dervan, good afternoon to your work as well. Thank you on their behalf. Hello. Hello. We lost that connection from Mr. Carter. Sorry about that. Please feel free to call us back. 876-922-4112-5. And the text line, same as the WhatsApp number, 876-365-3346. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, keep those messages coming in and those calls as well. 876-922-4112-5. 876-922-4112-5.
four one one two to five. And we should bring to your attention as well. Anybody in Chapelton listening to us, draw a little closer to your listening device because there's a medical mission heading to Chapelton in, uh, I believe that's Northern Clarendon, Chapelton, Chapelton, Northern Clarendon, yes. So named because of the church in the area. Uh, and the history goes on. But anyway, yes, the, the Chapleton mission is scheduled for the 11th and the 12th. Don't want to give you any misinformation. I know there's a one, two going on there. I think it's the 11th and the 12th or the 12th and the 13th. I really should not have done that without the aid of the material. Don't you think? Here we go. So let's go to the information. So the American Friends of Jamaica has been involved, has been a part of restoring the presence of Chapleton Community Hospital in Clarendon and uh, are partnering with the South Regional Health Authority. Raymond Levy and a cohort of US-based medical doctors, dentists, and nurses will come to Clarendon to see patients at Chapleton Community Hospital on March 12th and 13th. So it's the 12th and the 13th of March. Make a note of those dates, please. Can't afford for this kind of assistance to go to waste. So especially if you are based in Chapleton and surrounding areas, we humbly suggest that you take advantage of the presence of the Chapleton Community Hospital on the 12th and 13th of March, the medical team will be conducting free vision, dental, and health checks on a walk-in basis. The event is in partnership with the University of Miami School of Nursing. So make a note of it, please. Tell the people in Chapleton and surrounding areas Go ahead and spread the word, cause it to go viral and share the information. March 12 to 13, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're being encouraged to join and be a part of the health fair at the Chapleton Community Hospital, a commemorative event in honor of Osborne Stern, Iona, Ramming, Beverly, Haynes. For free vision check, free dental check, free health check. So please go ahead and spread the word. The 12th and the 13th of March, Chapleton Hospital. Let's go to the phone lines, 876-922-4112-5, Text line, same as the WhatsApp number, 876-365-3346, 876-365-3346. And so continue to spread the word, and we hope the people from the community will turn out, the people of Chapleton and surrounding areas. Good afternoon to you. Make sure you come out and take advantage of this health fair being organized by Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica from home and abroad. And so once again, 
Uh, oh, let's clear these messages first. Uh, Karen Rowe says, good afternoon, Mr. Malcolm, and all tuning in. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. We're giving thanks as usual, Karen, Ro Karen Rowe. Petro E says, March 12 to 13, Chapleton Community Hospital for free vision, dental, and health check. Thank you for spreading the word, Petro E. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. And let's see who else is out there. Uh, let's see, is it? Yes, I think Barbara, Barbara shared that message with us and we read that one already. So let's keep it going. 876-922-4112-5. 876-922-4112-5. Text line, same as the WhatsApp number, which means you can not only send us your text messages, your WhatsApp messages, your voice notes, but you can also call us via WhatsApp, 876-365-3346, And here's a bit of history for you as well. Negotiations on this day in 1660. Negotiations began between Captain Hastings of HMS Pearl on behalf of the English governor of Jamaica and Don Cristobal Arnaldo de Sassi, who was appointed the Spanish governor of Jamaica by the King of Spain to end the fighting. De Sassi had been waging guerrilla war against the English forces since they invaded the island in May 1655. Fighting between the Spanish and the British did not end when the British captured Jamaica from the Spanish. The British still had to contend with the remaining Spaniards and Maroons who were reluctant to give up Jamaica. One of those battles was fought at Duns River. The last Spanish governor of Jamaica was Don Cristobal Arnaldo de Sassi, who was at large and was still in touch with Spain, urging them to send ships to land forces at Old Harbor to take back Jamaica. Spain did not take his advice, and so he encamped at several points in the St. Anne coastal area, among them Shaw Park, Duns River, Runaway Bay Caves, Anata Bay, and in the hills above Monique, harassing the English, liaising with the free Black Spanish Africans who were their allies and who soon gained fame as the Maroons. On June 27, 1657, the two years of waiting Spanish forces were landed in Ocho Rios and supplies moved to a stockade at Duns River Falls. His orders were to cross the island and attack the English from the rear. Isasi left to collect horses at a large interior tableland called Los Vermejales, now known as Vermahales in Clarendon. The first action occurred while Isassi was away from the camp when the British commander Edward Doyley landed two miles east of Ocho Rios and immediately marched to the commander, marched to the stockade. On October 23, 1657, the Spanish succumbed to superior English power, firepower that is, and 120 were killed. The English reported only four slain, but Yisasi claimed the British had lost more than the Spaniards, but the battles continued. The Battle of Rio Nuevo, Rio Nuevo Bay, the Battle of Rio Nuevo, and the Battle of Shaw Park. Let's rest that there for the time being and go back to the phone lines. 876-922-4112-5, the numbers to call. Good afternoon. Thanks for calling. 
Yes, Mr. Carter. Yeah, I was just telling you that Gregory Park in Portmore for the past two nights is a lot of gunshots around the earth, servants. Ever since the election result was announced, the young males around here are at yeah. war. You know? So there's a connection between the two things? Yes, sir. And, and let me tell you something, Dervan, that I witnessed for myself over Portmore, you see? Portmore, the males in Portmore, a lot of the males, they're selling us back into slavery. They're selling the vote, Dervan. Up to political parties to vote. And let me ask you something, Dervan. Dervan, I'm married. What is the advantage of being married from living a, a common law life? What's the advantage, in your opinion, of being married to a woman and not marrying to a woman and living a common law life? Does that make you a better man or a worse man being married? Because we're dealing with human beings. I wouldn't want us to waste too much energy on that. You can, you can get multiple, multiple responses. I don't think you will get uh, a, a, a one-off uh, behavioral pattern as opposed to otherwise, depending on the relationship, etc. You know, based on my experience living in Garrison communities like Arnett Garden, Garrison Park, 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 and now living in Portmore. I realize that most gunmen, they are not married in a Durban. It's like most of them do have sent several women around them to help to nurture them. That is one of the things I notice with gunmen. And men who behave a certain way, a way that is a negative to society. Well, naturally, if they, if they're, if someone is is uh, is pushing a negative a negative lifestyle or just generally negative behavior, uh, naturally they're going to infect those with whom uh, they they engage, among other things. Yes, and what is going on in the world right now that I see in, in the countries that are at war, even in Haiti. When you look at Haiti's murder rate, they're not really killing off each other. You know? They are rebelling against a system, a system of government that was designed to keep them poor ever since the Asian Revolution. And when you look at it, the slave master who enslaved the Asian, the French, their country is in ruin right now. France is, France back is actually against the wall right now. You know? look, look what France did on Tuesday. France went ahead and legalized abortion in the Constitution. The first country in the world to ever do that. You, you think that is a good thing there, man? I, 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 I wouldn't say it is a good thing or a bad thing, but it's a function of the society that uh, the decision makers operate in that will naturally influence their behavior. So don't you think, don't you think a move like that by the French government is kicking against the prick of God's law? Uh, I don't think my my views on these matters uh, are any superior in any way to to any other uh, positions put forward, and I I I have to just leave it to those who are living in a particular society and every society is is different and therefore we end up with behaviors that are in in sync with the general with the general um, 
society that people operate in. That's a society that nurtured and and developed and are nurturing and developing our people. Okay. Sorry, hold a moment, please. Contractors, developers, and small builders contact Coast to Coast Group of Companies for high quality concrete products. The time by Coast to Coast Group of Companies is 302 on Power 106. Conrad Douglas and Associates Limited and its subsidiary, Environmental Science and Technology Limited the leading environmental management consultancy firm in Jamaica for over 38 years. CDA STEC operates by our slogan statements, quality service at its best, and science and technology for sustainable development. Telephone 876-929-8824 or visit 14 Carvalho Drive, Kingston 10. Tune into Power 106 FM for Power and Glory. Every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., Power and Glory with the extraordinary Alpha McKenzie. Join us for the inspired word and reflections, as well as soul-stirring gospel music. Every Sunday with Alpha McKenzie from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Power and Glory on Power 106 FM, the Power 106 FM app, One Spot Media at go-jamaica.com. <laughs> Thanks a lot for staying with us here on your program, Both Sides of the Story, Power 106 FM, still streaming live on the Gleaners website, go-jamaica.com. I... Thank you for holding. Depends on what you're looking for. Oh, you make a success, girl, it's a function of whatever the the standard is or the standards are in relation to uh, the standard of living, for example, and related matters. I want to paint a picture for you quickly, but for the listeners to listen. If I live in Portmore now, I live in a place named Independent City, right? And if you go over Independence City right now, you're going to see a lot of political flags and political billboards all over Portmore. That's not unique to Portmore and Independence City. Pardon me? That's not, that's not uh, much different from anywhere else. But when you go up in, when you go up in a place like Millsborough and Cherry Garden, you don't see any of these things up there. Why, Dervan? Somebody started a tradition and the tradition continues. But those traditions in Portmore, it is causing a decadence over there, and it is also causing a strife over there where young males are now selling out their communities for money to, to, political, to political activists, and it's driving down the property value of Portmore and creating a lot of trauma over there. And when you look and see where these political people live, they live in Millsborough and they live in Beverly Hills and Cherry Garden. And, and you can't go up here, go campaign, none at all up here. Why, 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 why is that inequity have to be continued? Is it that you can't go up there or or you, there, there's just not that kind of a crowd in that area who would be so minded? Because naturally, the, the first thing they're going to do is to look at the area. And... Yeah, Shipping all people from Kingston to boost up the crowd in a You see, 
that's yeah. a day you see see bus and coast stop us. Uh, driving into Portmore with supporters from all over the place. That has and been on. No, there is it. it it's not. A, it's a different energy. In in a in. Yes, you d don't expect people to. First of all, it's a residential community. The Port Moore is not residential. It is a residential community as well, but of a different stripe. A different stripe. Mm -hmm. Explain that stripe to me. There are different types of communities. There are different levels. There are different uh, features. Oh, so places like Portmore, where a strike, where you can come over there, set up a wood for gambling house, team political meeting, gunshot fires every night in Gregor Park since the election finished. How much gun they find over there this morning? How, much young, how many young males died since the election? But that strike is not up in Beverly Hills. I have now come to the conclusion that how this system in Jamaica is designed and across the world, it is designed under classes, demonic system where certain people are set up to fail and certain people are set up to, to elevate. There's no equity here, Dervan. Huh? If, if, if a man live up at Beverly Hills and can come in my community in Portmore and recite with graffiti, and I can't do the same thing in his community. What, what, what? You would have failed. You would have failed to play your part in in def defending or or protecting your community, if you allow them to come in and spray paint your the whole place. But to allow them, you know, calling out on the Jamaican males and female, you know. Black people, when you look at what is going on in Haiti, when you look at what is going on in Ukraine, when you look at what is going on in the Gaza Strip, now is the time for black men and women to live better, meaningful relationship and see if we can get a better life out of this country for our children. Children, because the political system worldwide has failed their one. And they're not taking any responsibility for it. None of the leaders across the group are taking it, any responsibility. It wouldn't suit them. They're constantly hunting votes. Oh, they are constantly hunting votes. Why do you keep constantly hunting votes and they're so wealthy already, Gervon? Tell me that the part of the formula. Because that equation has been working out for them all this time. So if it ain't broke, as the Americans say, don't fix it. Or why fix it? Oh, so it's all about the people. What the people are going to do about it. I guess that's one way of looking at it. There is one last question here. Is a wife better than a girlfriend in your opinion? <laughs> don't laugh, uh, there one. Yeah. 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 You 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 want to mash up my married life? A wife is better than a girlfriend. I hear you. So she keeps you more stable and keeps you out of trouble. Most uh, uh, men in a Jamaica do have the wife and a good and a good relationship with a girlfriend. Uh, it is not they wouldn't be killing her for the meals that they're they're doing. They are not happy. They're not living happy life. Yeah, it wouldn't be unique to wives though, or or or, or partners necessarily. It, there there are there will always be other features and all other factors to take into consideration. Oh, and really? once you know the parameters, you just operate accordingly. Yeah. You too. Bye bye. Yeah. This is your program, Both Sides of the Story, Apollo 106 FM, still streaming live on the Gleaners website. WhatsApp as well, 876-365-346. To the phone lines once again, let's see what we have here or who we have here as we check in. Hello, good afternoon, thanks for calling. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. 
or uh, two things. Um, a couple of months ago, I can call you and tell you that um, I have a problem with the work commission. You send me bill for five toll having a meter. So apparently, yeah, they give me a meter now. And would you believe me? Are you with me? I'm listening. Would you believe me? My, my, life, my water bill is cheap, $200. Your water bill? Yeah. yeah I'm not surprised $200, there because yeah. that's that's usually the, the the cheapest or the lowest on of the bills, the water bill. Yeah, but what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that was five or six months. Sorry, five sorry, months. hold hold a moment, please. Mm -hmm. You're listening to Power 106 FM. The time now. 3.15. Motorists, listen up, cause me have a property. It's a right on your bike, a van, your helmet. Seat belt is a must, no drive without it. And make sure the little one them well strapped in. Make sure them fit good in a them car seat. Pedestrian this time, bring back to mind everything where you learn. Never you cross when you see a green light. Look right, then left, then I can look right. Remember now, if it's dark outside, make sure your ears up. When look right, walk right, or drive, be by, stay alive. On the road, be safe, stay alive. Food safety begins with you. A message from the Road Safety Unit. The College of Agriculture, Science and Education Case is hosting its webinar on Thursday, March 7, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. under the theme, Protecting Your Goats and Sheep from Thieves, Predators and Parasites Through Zero Grazing. Admission is free. Sessions include goat house construction and manure management, health and nutrition issues with the zero-grazed goats and sheep, and much more. Pre-register now by the link on Case website or Instagram and scanning the QR code. The Bible Speaks. 30 minutes of vitalizing motivation grounded in the Word of God. The Bible Speaks. Showcasing soothing spiritual music from across the world. It's The Bible Speaks with Rev. Dr. Aaron Damas every Sunday from 6.30 to 7 a.m. here on Power 106 FM and the Power 106 FM app. Thanks for holding. Please continue. So, as I was saying, that, um, wait, my, my water is 200 and change now. Mm -hmm. And I usually pay like $5,000 without a meter. You know, I think they owe me some, some, um, what you call it, some mm -hmm. reimbursement. If you feel that way about it, by all means, put it in writing. You want to start by by writing to the NWC and then copying it to the CAC, that's the Consumer Affairs, a F Consumer Affairs Commission. And there is also yeah, mm, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna charge the five thousand and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, for me to send me two hundred dollars, I have to pay ten dollars to send me two hundred to make a dollar. Oh you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't mind sending ten dollars to people. They 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 usually want me. You know what I mean? But anyway, that fix, and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. All right, next thing. Um, I hear you saying a lot of people. Sorry, I have to tell you though, your your line have some has some blank spots al along the way. Every now and then we miss a piece of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Are you still there? Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Well, Sammy, yeah. I was saying that, okay. And Sammy was saying that. A lot of people pay for the vote. One pay to go vote. But they're saying that it can be paying people to vote. But they have the money. Mm -hmm. Government is the one who has the money. No, we, we so don't. They should assume that they to make we... the private money to pay for vote. Yeah, but you see this thing called moat, as my late mother would say, it make it turn crossways, so it make for say anything. 
And anybody can come on the radio and say anything. It happens all the time. Anybody can come on radio and say anything at any time. That's why some of us are here to provide some kind of stewardship for the process, the communication process from here. So that even should not even have been allowed to go on air in the first place because we have no evidence. So we, we have to we have to be mindful of these things. No, but my thing is, and, and it's a, it's a, we're in that age and stage and that mindset right now that people have to come better than how they have been coming with some of this a lot of this kind of uh I don't even want to call it information. But a lot of a lot of a lot of what they've been spewing, uh, a lot of it is is not is not worth the the, the very mouth it comes out of, w w irrespective of which mouth it it comes from. It's just people just everybody just want to be able to say something, a con or to start a conversation, or to start a debate, or to start a discussion, or to start some propaganda. We, we, we have to come better than that. We must come ready with the evidence and, and uh, uh, under protection if it comes to that and say, this is what we, this is what happened. Yeah, but I hear, I hear from the news that I, um, let's say that people come to me and say they want me to vote or they not vote. Yeah. But you see, vote buying thing, you know, there's some people all over the world. Yeah, well, illicit or illegal or nefarious activities are not the purview of any one individual institution or group of people. Remember, one of the things we like to say on this program, man must be protected from himself. Left to himself, Man is perhaps the most destructive creature on the face of the planet. So, yes, yeah, so you put in place mechanisms to protect the system and to ensure the integrity of the system so that when people are coming with what they're coming with, you just give them a nice, pleasant surprise and take them to wherever they need to go to spend a little time or a lot of time. Yeah, but what I'm saying, they do that to the America too, but they do it in an official way. No, God. <laughs> you say in, a, in an official Donald way. Trump. In the Donald Trump. The what? You know, so they get, they get Donald Trump by voter. I don't know about that. When Donald Trump was in power, when Donald Trump was in power, you know, I see she come to my house. So All right, we're not going to, we're not going to, right notwithstanding the character of the individual, we're not going to play that game here because we are supposed to be operating at a different level. Sent, I think you meant Maroons. Maroons were sent from Haiti to Jamaica to fight for freedom against the British. Nanny came from Haiti to fight also. Really? But the Maroons settled in signing a treaty with the British. It's a good thing that has happened or else Jamaica would be just like Haiti today. Uh, that's pure supposition and what if uh, let's see this one here good afternoon Durban Durban this government doesn't have a heart Durban as soon as the Haitians arrived in Jamaica the government sent them back the government could find itself in trouble based on the laws and rules of the treaty of Shagaramas 
it says, if anyone from CARICOM is seeking to get asylum, they need to do so. In this case, it is not happening. The GLP government doing the opposite. The government put back the Haitians on their boat and sending them back wee hours at night. It shouldn't allow, shouldn't be allowed to continue. The government has been now threatened by civil and there are arguments. Thank you for your message. Salah, otherwise known as Neville. Ellerid says, you may fail to talk about the past, but that is what caused the problem that we have today. No, it's the how, Ellerid. It's how. Check it. H-O-W. How. It's the how that matters. Because in this life, we are supposed to learn what to do, where to do, how to do, why to do. We have to learn. The how makes a difference. And let's go down the line here. Franklin MacDonald is uh, on the march searching for stories, documented material, etc. to share with our listeners. And this one features Cox and Dodd. Cox and Dodd's daughter wants apology for very insulting scene in Bob Marley One Love movie. That's that's another story arising from that movie. That's, and this is the one that got Franklin McDonald's attention. Cox and Dodd's daughter wants apology for a very insulting scene in Bob Marley, One Love movie. Morna Dodd, uh, daughter of the late Studio One producer Clement Sir Cox and Dodd, has expressed strong disapproval of how her father is depicted in the recently released film, Bob Marley, One Love. She specifically objects to a scene where Dodd, played by Jamaican actor Jeffrey Crossley, is portrayed as a gun-toting bad man when he met the teenager Whalers, an act uh, let's go to the break and come back. Help us protect Jamaica's borders. Tell us about any illegal guns coming through customs controlled areas. Call Crime Stop at 311. The time by the Jamaica Customs Agency is 313. Power 106 FM, the digital sound, and now reaching you in more ways. Listen to us on 106.1 to 106.9 on the FM band. You can also listen to us on the Power 106 FM app which you can download on the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. You can tune in on your mobile phones by dialing 631-359-8281 if you're in the U.S. And if you're in the U.K., you can dial 0330-606-0953. Plus, listen to us at onespotmedia.com and the OneSpot Media app or... So this story, once again, uh, Morna Dodd, 
daughter of the late Studio One producer, Clement Sir Coxon Dodd, has expressed strong disapproval of how her father is depicted in the recently released film, Bob Marley, One Love. She specifically objects to a scene where Dodd, played by Jamaican actor Jeff Crossley, is portrayed as a gun-toting bad man when he meets the teenage whalers. I, I, I remember that scene. I remember that scene. An act Morna describes as very insulting and a gross misrepresentation of her father's character. But uh, the question is, who gave the go-ahead go then? Hmm. Uh, she wants an immediate apol public apology from Paramount Pictures, Rita Marley, and the Marley family. The apology is required for the portrayal of my father, for the portrayal of my father to millions of people globally as, as, as he approaching and threatening teenage children with a gun. The film's producers have cemented an image in the minds of millions where it seems that a lot of Jamaican music was created under the gun. That should never have been done to my father. Cox and Dodd, who died in 2004 at age 72, was influential in the development of ska and reggae in the 1950s and 60s, launching the careers of numerous Jamaican artists through Studio One, including a very young Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, and Bonnie Whaler as the Whalers. The young group had their first recording session with Dodd, producing Simmer Down, I'm Going Home, and Do You Remember in 1964, and over 80 other songs until they parted ways in 1966. The producer was also known for his nurturing role towards young artists, many of whom stayed at his Brentford Road studio. Bob Marley even lived at Brentford Road as a teenager, his daughter said. He was very much a father figure to a lot of young children. There is even a studio on brand dedicated to young artists. My father did everything for the music. He reinvested the music. He reinvested back in his music and built his studio to be a platform for the industry. Morna noted he's also recognized as the father figure of the marriage between Bob and Rita Marley in February 1966. He bought Bob Marley's suit for the marriage. I find it very insulting that his memory has been smeared in this way, she told Dance Hall magazine. Some suggest that the portrayal of Dodd in the film might have been influenced for dramatic effect by the colorful reputation of Arthur Duke Reed, another prominent Jamaican producer and label owner at the time. Duke had a passion for guns, perhaps nurtured by his decade in the police force, and it is said that he was never seen without two pistols, the Gleaner wrote of Reed, who founded the record label Tara Isle, Tre Treasure Isle, Treasure Isle. Morna Dodd also raised another issue concerning One Love, the song that inspired the film's title and is featured on the official track. This portrayal could be considered a premeditated action to defame my father's character in order to publicly reduce his reputation to take credit for the publishing of this song, Morna claimed. She argued that the original 1965 ska version of the song, which appeared on the Whalers debut album, The Wailing Whalers, was produced by Studio One and that her father and Neville Livingston, Bunny Whaler, were co-writers alongside Bob Marley. According to her, One Love has been in a publishing credit dispute since the more popular 1977 version, One Love, People Get Ready, appeared on the Exodus album. 
This version credits Marley and Curtis Mayfield as it contains an interpolation, I beg your pardon, of the Impressions song, People Get Ready, written by Mayfield. I have seen recently where Alan Skilcole is taking credit for the 1977 re-recording as Bob Marley was reluctant to do so, knowing of the ownership where both my father and Neville Livingston are noted as co-writers with Bob Marley. There was an attempt to coerce Neville Livingston, aka Bonnie Whaler, in 1999 to sign a contract to give up his rights in order to further diminish the original publisher owner ownership, she alleged. My father died on May 4, 2004, and it should be noted that in 2007, the Recording Academy of America incorporated his 1965 One Love version in their Hall of Fame, giving both himself and the Wailing Whalers credit. This is notable as it was chosen over the now popular 1977 version as the original. Paramount Pictures and Tough Gong's Bob Marley One Love broke records following its release on Valentine's Day last month. The movie, which stars Kingsley Benadire and Lashana Lynch as Bob and Rita Marley, is now the sixth highest grossing music biopic according to Screen Rant. As of March 3, 2024, Bob Marley, One Love, has earned 82.8 million in the United States and Canada and 63.3 million in territories, other territories for a worldwide total of $146.1 million. On the face of it, it's not really, it might seem like a lot of money, 146.1 million, but within the context of other major productions, you would be looking at much more than that. But it is what it is. It's not about the money, right? All right, let's keep it going. Orinthia Campbell says, hello, Sir Malcolm. Hello, Orinthia. Thank you for joining us. Patrick Evans says, big up, Mr. Malcolm. You know you, your respect is safe with me, says Patrick Evans. Galloway Kevin says, good evening, my ambassador, Durban Malcolm, and real friends of Jesus Christ. Super thanks to you all. There are a few more messages that have come in. Valerie Wella Carpeck says, very, very nice song. Very interesting, says Louis Burke. Thank you very much. And let's clear a few more messages here. Uh, Curtis says, good afternoon, Sir Malcolm, and everyone everywhere, home and abroad. Claremont is cool and easy. Still want to know if the governor of Black River is okay. Not hearing him, which is strange. And that is in reference to Crocs in Black River. Welcome to your legal corner on Power 106 FM. Your source of information for all matters regarding U.S. immigration. Call in with your questions and concerns on 876-922-41125. You can send a text or WhatsApp message to 876-279-8598. Time now for your legal corner during both sides of the story, right here on Power 106 FM. Apologies for the delayed start of this week's edition of uh, Your Legal Corner with U.S. Immigration Attorney Delia Walker Huntington. This is the program, this is the feature, this is the segment that focuses on U.S. immigration matters. So if you have a question, any question whatsoever in relation to U.S. immigration matters, you have come to the right place. Here are the numbers to call, 
four one one two to five. Eight seven six nine two two four one one two to five. The text line, same as the WhatsApp number, eight seven six three six five three three four six. But of course, there's also the Paro 106 number, which we need to share with you, which is 876. And we're going to bring up the rest of that number for you in just a moment. And we should be able to connect. Uh, seamlessly. Here we go. 876-279-8598. 876-279-8598. So let's say hello, good afternoon, and welcome to your host on today's edition of Your Legal Corner, Dahlia Walker Huntington. Good afternoon, Mr. Malcolm. How are you today? Good afternoon. I'm fine. Thanks. And you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Doing well. Happy to be here with you once again and to be able to reach your, your audience. It's, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to be on with you as well, Dahlia Walker Huntington. Thank you so much. And uh, the dynamics are ever changing where you are. <laughs> You know, I I have citizenship in two countries, and the dynamics are always changing. <laughs> so I'm kept busy trying to keep up. But yes, you know, 2024 in America, it's a general election year, meaning that uh, we vote for president along with um, several other high offices, including. Um, Really, all members of the House of Representatives, uh, the 435 members, are up for re-election every two years. There's, their term is only two years. It's just that many of them don't draw a challenger uh, or a meaningful challenger, I could say. Sometimes, you know, I, I could say I'm going to challenge my Congress. Sorry, one moment. Let's pick up that point right after the break, please. You're listening to Power 106 FM. The time is now 3.45. Your dad sees how it's Let's get digital. Flip online. The Smart 15. While and pay your final income tax return for 2023. An estimated return for 2024. There are so many options. JamaicaTax.gov.jm. Direct funds transfer. NCB online banking. And Scotia online and mobile app. Pay your taxes the digital way. All returns must be filed online and on time. Tax Administration Jamaica. Changing the way we do business. You're listening to Your Legal Corner. Your source of information on all matters regarding U.S. immigration. You can call in with your questions and concerns on 876-922-411225. You can send a text or WhatsApp message to 876-279-8598. Now, back to your legal corner during both sides of the story on Power 106 FM. So the word was challenge going to the break, Ms. Dahlia. Uh, Thirty-five members of the U.S. House of Representatives um, serve for two-year terms. Most of them do not face a challenge every two years, or if they do face a challenge, it's not a meaningful one. So we often don't hear a lot about um, the congressional races. The, the U.S. Senate, they serve for six-year uh, terms, and each member of the Senate, each state rather has two senators, while the, the states vary with the number of representatives they have because they're apportioned according to population. So some states have more representat representatives in Congress than others. Uh, but everybody, every state, no matter how small, Delaware has two, Texas has two senators. So those senators do not 
99.9% of the time, both of them are not up for re-election at the same time. And two years ago, we had Georgia for various reasons. Uh, their two Senate seats were up for um, election at the same time. Um, that was in 2020, I believe. So, so the Senate, um, which is, is a bigger prize because it is a longer, longer term, you're also representing the entire state. Um, it's a much more difficult um, proposition to win that seat. So those many of those um, races are up this year. But the big prize this year, of course, is the, um, the presidential race. And now we have seen this week that the, the, there were two contenders left on the Republican side. Um, one dropped out, leaving um the candidate the presumptive nominee who ha is going to be the third time in a row that this individual will be the rep the nominee for the republican party 2016 2020 and here we are in 2024 and the democrats uh presumptive nominee is the sitting president so i'm saying all of this to say we've been talking on this program now um for years uh, almost 20 years on this program, and uh, anyone who listens must realize that the political landscape in the United States has a direct impact on U.S. immigration laws, procedures, uh, systems. The, a lot of the polls coming out of the primaries that have been going on, um, exit polling shows that immigration is a top priority for many um, Republican voters in particular. And so what happens, Sturman, is that yes, there is an issue at the border with controlling the southern border in particular, um, and the people who are coming in seeking asylum and those who are sneaking in across the border. But what happens when people say immigration is a concern is that it spills over into the immigration that you and I talk about, that 99.9% .9 of Jamaicans um, are processed through, that is family reunification, family members in America filing for um, their, their spouses, their parents, their children, their siblings, whether they're in America or they're outside of America. To a lesser extent, um, there's also business immigration where some persons in Jamaica um, are, are filed for by employers or they self-petition if they have businesses and they're transferring themselves um, to the United States or, or their employer wants to set up a, a subsidiary in America and wants to transfer them. So it, it's, it is something, all of what I've just said is important for Jamaicans, Caribbean people living in the United States to keep um, to keep their ears open and to be involved in the process because many people um, have family members who they have filed for, they're considering filing for, and Jamaicans have always migrated going back for decades. We, uh, we happen to be among, uh, per capita, one of the highest, uh, one of the countries that sends the highest number of immigrants to America. So consequently, we don't qualify for the visa lottery, um, which we talk about every fall, where if you're from certain countries, you can just send in an application and a lottery, your name, names are chosen for persons to get green cards. Jamaicans don't qualify for that because of the number, the percentage of immigrants that we, we, we have migrating to the United States. So it's important to continue to follow um, to follow the information. Oftentimes people say, oh, it don't matter who wins an election. It does matter, uh, particularly in the immigration context. Give you an example, the Republican nominee has um, immigration plans already. If you recall in 2016, uh, within a matter of days of, 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 of being sworn in, uh, there was a Muslim ban. Uh, that he intends to reinstate, he, re he intends, he says, to deport millions of undocumented persons in America, um, 
we know that the resources are limited in terms of how many people can ice process, house, he proposes to, to open camps to hold the tools um, while they are being deported, and on and on and on. So it's important uh, for persons who live in the United States to, to understand the process, be involved in the process because it directly affects you. If you're a Jamaican living in the United States, you are there because of immigration. So you ought to be concerned, and especially if you intend to bring a family member um, to the United States. Sometimes you don't even intend to, and you go home to a funeral or a wedding, and you meet somebody, and the next thing you know, love is in the air, and you desperately now want your, your newfound love to, to migrate to the U.S. So it's important. Indeed it is. Some people would say ultra important or super important. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That was that was uh, very well, as usual, in your own way. Very well uh, presented, easily digested, and we appreciate that. Thank you, as usual, Ms. Dahlia. Sure, sure. You're welcome. All right. So we have a couple of calls. So if we could, uh, let's, yes. let's... Okay, great. So here are the numbers to call, 876-922-4112. Two to five. Hello, good afternoon. Thanks for calling your legal corner with Delia Walker Huntington. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, um, Bergen. Uh, happy belated birthday to Miss Huntington. Uh, All right. <laughs> what a thing when people uh, know your business, eh? I <laughs> <laughs> no, no, all right, over, um, I, went and, I went on my immigrant interview this morning at the U.S. Embassy. Mm -hmm. um, on further check, they say that my fingerprint um, come up on the system in Canada on a crime mm -hmm. where I do not know anything about it. I've been to Canada in that time, but never been arrested, never been fingerprinted are in any trouble because I went on the farm work program. Okay. So so they they refuse my visa they are telling me that I have to start it over the Canadian um okay. the Canadian oh, embassy sorry, first. Yes, yes, yes. Canadian embassy. Well one of yeah. the first things you're gonna have to do is to get your police record from Canada. Uh, there's a process to do that to get the record to see um, how, how the U.S. could have come up with that, um, that determination. They must be looking at something where your fingerprints matched. I don't know if they told you if the name matched or something, but you have to get to the bottom of it because unless you do, um, you will not be granted um, U.S. residency. Who is it that filed for you to, to move to U.S. permanent? My wife. Okay. They told me to go ahead and do the medical. And okay. me the medical. Yeah, because the medical is good. Um, I think for a year, I don't remember how long. So you do the medical. But at the same time, you need to get to the bottom of why it is that you're showing up. Did they tell you what the crime was? No, no, he did not say. I, I asked okay. him and he told me, he did not say anything more than I have to talk to with the senior and answer. Okay. So that's the first know. thing that you need to do because what? depending on what it is and if yeah. it in fact is an arrest or a charge that you might not have thought you let us assume that you were um, charged for something. Um, is, is it pending? Were you convicted of it? So all of those. No, I wasn't. That's the thing. I wasn't. I went on the on the the farmer program. Mm -hmm. We didn't have time. We didn't have time to come up with the, the where they are was much less because right, it right. was just so shocking to me. Yeah, so you need to you need to jump on that right away, sir, because it's important, and I'm sure your wife, both you and your wife, were disappointed today because you thought you know this was yeah. this was going to be it. Been for two years. Yeah. Been for two yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. All right. So, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if you if you wish, at the end you can take my number. We can try to get involved, or you can um, you can try to pursue it on your own. No problem. Okay. All right. All right.
Thank you very much. You're listening to Your Legal Corner with U.S. Immigration U.S. Immigration Attorney Dahlia Walker-Huntington. And we're taking your calls on 876-922-4112-5. Good afternoon. Thanks for calling. All right. No, hold on. Let's see here then. Let's go to the text messages in the meantime. 876 Let's bring it up. Right, 876-279-8598, 876-279-8598. Here we go. This one says, good afternoon. How long does it take when a husband, when filing for his wife, and can you apply for a visitor in the time of the filing? So if the husband um, is an American citizen, that's an immediate relative, and it's as quickly as they can process the paperwork and schedule an appointment. We're telling people now one to two years. It used to be nine months to a year, but we just are safe to say one to two years. If the husband is a green card holder and filing for his wife, um, then you have to wait on your priority date to become current. And as of March, the priority date that they're working on is June 22nd, 2020. So that means it could take three and a half to four years. So the next question is, can the person in Jamaica get a visitor's visa um, while that application is pending? The, you can apply, um, and if you have enough ties to Jamaica, um, to overcome the presumption that you're going to migrate, that is, that you're going to go and visit with your husband and not return, um, then the officer could consider giving you a visa. But if you didn't have a visa before and you're just going to apply for a visa now while your petition is pending, um, the chances of you getting a brand new visitor visa while that is pending is pretty slim. doesn't stop you from applying um, as long as you're truthful on the application, you can go ahead and apply. Thank you, Ms. Dahlia. Here's another one. How, how soon, oh, oh, we're up on the time. Oops. Uh, I'm not sure what, what, what your schedule is like, Ms. Dahlia. Can you? You can go ahead and ask the final question. Okay. All right. So this one says, how soon can you expect to get an interview since you were documentarily qualified in June 2023. My visa category is F11. And can, sorry, and can you travel to the USA or any other country after you're being, after you, you're being documentarily qualified? So the F1 category is the adult unmarried son or daughter of an American citizen. The priority date that is current now is February 8th of 2015. So the person needs to check the priority date and see how far are they away from it. Now, it doesn't mean that in April, they will be processing March of 2015. Sometimes they stay on that one priority date for months at a time, or sometimes they jump ahead several weeks or they jump ahead a few days. You just have to keep watching the visa bulletin to see where they are, and that will give you an idea of when you can expect um, a visa appointment. So being documentary qualified means that the National Visa Center has everything they need. All you now need to do is to wait on a visa to become available and for the embassy in Kingston to have the space to, to schedule your interview. The question of whether or not you can travel um, if, you, if you have a visa and you want to travel to the United States, that's fine. What people need to understand is that having a visa doesn't guarantee you entry into the United States. Even a green card doesn't guarantee you entry. It gives you the right to legally come to the border, and you're asking that Customs and Border Protection Officer for, protect, for permission to enter the United States. That permission can be granted or denied for a variety of reasons. The 
So the question is, can you travel? Yes, but if the officer at any point believes that you are not coming to visit and return, they can cancel your visa and deny you entry. And uh, would love to go on, but we have to deny you the opportunity to, to get in a, a few more, Ms. Dahlia. Thank you, as usual, uh, for your patience and understanding in uh, getting uh, in uh, us getting you up and running uh, this afternoon. Certainly, certainly, certainly. So, you know, there's always next week, God's willing, we'll be back. Looking forward to that. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, and as you go, you might want to leave a, a contact, as usual, just sure. in case. Sure. To reach me in the United States, it's 954-963-8555. That's 954-963-8555. My offices are in Florida, but we practice immigration law anywhere in the States and family law in Florida. Uh, to reach me in Jamaica, it's 876-969-9226. That's 969-9226 or 925-0949. Thanks again and have a good week to you, Durban, and all your listeners. Thank you very much. Very, many happy returns. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. You've just listened to Your Legal Corner, your source of information for all matters regarding U.S. immigration. Join us next Thursday at 3.30 p.m. for Your Legal Corner during both sides of the story, right here on Power 106 FM. At Wellington Dental, they offer cleaning, filling, whitening, and other services for the entire family. The time by Wellington Dental is... 4.04 on Power 106. Power 106 FM, the digital sound, and now reaching you in more ways. Listen to us on 106.1 to 106.9 on the FM band. You can also listen to us on the Power 106 FM app, which you can download on the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. You can tune in on your mobile phones by dialing 631-359-8281 if you're in the U.S., and if you're in the UK, you can dial 0330-606-0953. Plus, listen to us on OneSpotMedia.com and the OneSpot Media app, or log on to go-jamaica.com. Power 106 FM, where all views can contend, giving you powerful talk radio in so many ways, on air and online. This afternoon at the start, we neglected to mention the details or the source of that uh, speech that, that we delivered. It's uh, a quotation attributed to American politician and orator Patrick Henry from a speech he made to the Second Virginia Convention on March 23rd. 1775 at St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia. Henry is credited with having swung the balance in convincing the convention to pass a resolution delivering Virginian troops for the Revolutionary War. Among the delegates to the convention were future United States presidents Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. Let's continue now with more on your program, both sides of the story, Power 106 FM, still streaming live on the Gleaners website, go-jamaica.com. Good afternoon to Natalie Winter, who's calling us on our text line, same as the WhatsApp number. Good afternoon. Hi, Devon, what's up? Everything is Hello? up. Everything is up. Every, everything. You see how the excitement done uh, and there is a dead silence there, but the election finished and the excitement is finished and the country is quiet as a lamb. So it is. All you hear is all you hear is the commentators giving their different views. What I just have one views on it. Um the political parties must try to get the numbers up, whether local or general, because the percentage is 29.6% for local government election is quite, quite low. 
So we, I guess we're going to have to do a new enumeration um, process, but why? The numbers are getting lower and lower every time an election is called. Like more, more people are opting out and stuff. Why do you think What's that is view? so? Hello? Why do you think that is so? Um, in the earlier years, politics used to be the main state of life. No, no, it's not politics. No, it's economics. So I guess that, you know, everybody has to try to find something for say why they used to try out into the politics now, no, no me are trying to survive. So it's a matter of survival, you know, politics not the mainstay as, as it used to be back then. And when you say politics as the mainstay, what do you mean? Yeah, politics used to be, you know, a man is a diet this and him not going to switch and not going to stay at home, I'm not going to be dissatisfied with his party. It's like everything his party does is correct. But nowadays it's not so. People are thinking about issues on a different level and it's the ideology of the parties back then in the 70s and 60s has changed from the 80s and 90s coming straight on. It has changed. The whole political landscape has changed. We hear you loud and clear. But, you know, it's whether it changed for the better or for the worse because look at these numbers. These numbers that like the people are opting out and will Anything that the, the majority of those who decide to vote. So the majority of those who decide to vote and we vote that a party in power that is not put it this way and not have the heartbeat of the people. They just have to accept what the majority of us vote. They can't say anything. I'm afraid that Jamaica will enter in like 80 one of these days if we don't get the people really participating in the electoral process. Whether you want to vote PNP, JLP, or NDM, but get the people involved. Get the people involved. Get the people organized. It doesn't matter which party, but these numbers are too low, and the frightening numbers are too, the numbers are too frightening. But we have set, the, the, the electorate has sent the political parties a wake up call and a message that things can be the same as how they used to be. Sure, right about that. Mm -hmm. So, what's up in the news? Well, we've been watching a couple of stories coming out of Haiti as, mm -hmm. as far as the future stewardship of that country is concerned in the area uh -huh. of governance. Uh -huh. I'm not sure to what extent anything has changed since we, the last uh -huh. check we made to see oh, okay. where we are right now or where they are right now. But and the matter of sending back the refugees, I don't think they should. I think they should give them a chance to say, boy, if I want asylum here in Jamaica or what? Because it is crisis proportion right now. Crisis proportion right now. And I think they should give, give them a chance to say, boy, I want to stay here or I want to go back to Haiti. Because I don't think anybody would want to go back to Haiti right now. Uh, that trip, to, trip is very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous across the sea here. I, they have to have hard to take that. I know when you reach Jamaica, I know they send you back. It's kind of tough. It's kind of tough because some of them say that the house or whatever they belong is, they have to make the trip. Mm -hmm. Wife, picnic, baby, mother, everything. I think Jamaica government should give them a chance. Although I have a lot of people who disagree with me, but it is humanitarian now we're looking at. It's too, I don't know. We just have to pray that for the best for Haiti. Just have to pray. Mm -hmm. Well, the other one, I see you going on the cross country all over the place. 
you know, was in an uh, emancipation park, Portland, um, St. Anne, all over the place. I just wish you well and, you know, hope to meet some of you guys, you know. Really enjoyed myself at Emancipation Park. Indeed we did. Okay. Thank Keep you. Good. You too. Thanks for the call. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. This is your program, Both Sides of the Story, Power 106 FM, still streaming live on the Gleaners website, go-jamaica.com. And uh, taking your calls on 876-922-411225. And... Taking your calls on 876-922-4112-5. The text line, same as the WhatsApp number, which means you can not only send us your text messages, your WhatsApp messages, your voice notes, but you can call us on WhatsApp as well. 876-365-3346. Looks like the device has once again taken on a life of its own. I have no idea what this is about. Uh, let's see. Let's take that off the screen and move on. And there are, there are a couple of leftover messages with respect to immigration matters, all things being well, we look forward to bringing, to carrying them over to the, the next edition of Your Legal Corner. This one says, uh, how, no, I think these are the ones having to do with US immigration. So let's move over, see what else we have here. Mr. McDonald sharing with us information on how to listen to podcasts, everything you need to know. And H. Morgan in Birmingham has something to say. We'll listen after the break. You're listening to Power 106 FM. The time is now 4.15. Tune into Power 106 FM or Power and Glory. Every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., Power and Glory with the extraordinary Alpha McKenzie. Join us for the inspired word and reflections, as well as soul-stirring gospel music. Every Sunday with Alpha McKenzie from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Power and Glory on Power 106 FM, the Power 106 FM app, One Spot Media at go-jamaica.com. In a little tent Oh, and just like the river I've been running Ever since It's been a long A long time coming But I know A change gonna come Oh, yes it will Thanks a lot for staying with us here on your program, Both Sides of the Story, Power 106 FM. Mikey Morris says, Mr. Malcolm, this song that you're playing, who is the original singer for the song? Was it Sam Cooke or someone else? Well, this is, this is the one we like. It doesn't matter how many are out there, but this is the one. The one by Sam Cooke, assuming there are others. This is the one. This one is perfect from all indications. Thank you very much, Mikey Morris, for your message on uh, Facebook. Valerie Wellacar Peck is on board as well. Thank you very much for tuning in. And Barbara Hart says, but Sir Durban, the entire Whalers gang was not easy. And those musicians who used to own studios were not the greatest business people in those time and years gone by in the late 1960s, 70s, and many things happened to many, many musicians who left 
the rough handling and tough life of these musical producers. They were never any angels at all. I saw the Bob Marley movie short of many truth too. My uncle who used to play guitar and find himself staying at the studio for long periods had problems with these same producers when they went to the studio in the 1960s, 70s. And it was not easy, but no one really know the dead truth, says uh, Barbara Hart, of these producers in those times. Badness used to run those music industries in all those places, and the rivalry was hot in those days. Sir D, my uncle, is still alive, living at the age of 72 with his children. So many people can tell the truth but the truth will never be told, Sir D. Thank you very much for your message. And that's from Barbara, Barbara Hart. Thank you for sharing. And all the best to you. Arinthia Campbell is greeting us as well. Hi, Arinthia. Here's another message of, this one is from H. Morgan in Birmingham. We read this one before, did we? No. Dervan, good afternoon to you. I heard something which I didn't know how true it was. But if it is true, what kind of message is this person sending to the young people? And in particular, those who are doing the scamming. I understand they changed the word scamming to chopping. This is what I understand was said. An opposition. Oh, well, we dealt with that story already, didn't we? We dealt with that story already. Thank you very much. And this one says, uh, some people just want, why would you say something like that now? But anyway, the question is, how would you know the living of your father and you never born yet? Don't hear. All right. Xavier has some less than flattering comments about one of the persons that, who either called or sent a message. Well, Thank you for your thoughts, Xavier. Let's move on as we continue with more here on your program, both sides of the story, Paro 106 FM. Randy Williams says, Island hopping, Durban. I'm in Fort de France today. A little French would help. <laughs> uh, bonjour, Randy Williams. Ça va? J'espère que tout va, tout va bien. Uh, 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 quelle heure est-il à Faux de France maintenant? Randy, quelle heure, quelle heure est-il? Quelle heure est-il? Uh, for the phones. Uh, 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 let's see. He says, not much English is spoken here. Good afternoon. So Randy Williams is in for the phones. Uh, where is this again? This is either uh, Martinique or Guadeloupe. Uh, yes, Martinique. I should know that. Spent an Easter in Martinique some years ago. And let's see. 
Uh, we're not. We're looking out for the the responses from from our listener. So it's five twenty three p.m. in Fort de France, Martinique. Cinq uh, heures vingt à Fort de France, Martinique. Five twenty three p.m. in Fort de France, Martinique. So poor, where where is he now? Our our listener. He. He knows little French, it seems, as he's saying, not much English is spoken there in Martinique, in, in Fort de France, Martinique, which is true. I should, I should pull out those pictures one of these days, still have the pictures that we took in Martinique when we had fun. So that is... So, Randy, you're not going to give us any anything more than you've given us so far in terms of your experience in Martinique. So we're going to move on from there. In the meantime, 876-922-4112 to 5 are the numbers to call. 876-922-4112 to 5. The text line, same as the WhatsApp number. 876-365-3346, 876-365-3346. Hello, good afternoon. Thanks for calling. Hello, Hello sir. Good afternoon. Yes, yes. Um, I want to speak to the phone for a while. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I, um, I'm a friend that who did talk to the other day about the blind. I, I'm the blind guy who, who talked to me about the, the play. Yes, what, what's the latest? Well, the lady said she didn't get to me. I, I did call her and she said she would call me, but what she never called me. You understand? Mm -hmm. But that is not the problem. What, what, what? I just want to to tell you something over the year of life. I'm a singer, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I have many songs. So I would like someone to, to record the album from, you know? Well, part of it is marketing yourself, putting yourself out there, and uh, giving people an opportunity to not just see you, but to hear you, and yeah. to, to, uh, to be able to identify your work and to to talk about the quality of your work. Right. I, 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 I want to do the album before, if anything, before I pass up, you know? Because mm -hmm. I, I, I do many songs, many, many songs, you know? And some of them, they, they, they take them all So away. Where, where can those song, songs be found? We can found in America. Well, mostly American. You know, I, I did have an album. Are now. those are those original songs or original, original. I don't mm -hmm. sing cover version. Okay. I have an album they used to call Warming. Used to be called what? Warming. 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 Farming. Yeah. Call that name the farming that they take away from it. They who? Some white people. You weren't able to stop them from taking away your 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 uh, recording. I have been through and when I done it, they not even mix it. They just take it away. They give me hand and they go on with it. So is it that they have been benefiting from it? I don't know, sir. I really don't know. I don't hear nothing about them again, you know? Oh. Oh, dear. So I want to I want to put out something fresh, you know? A fresh album. 
So any producer out there who, who will deal with me here, you know. My, my number is 825-6843. And they call me Power Drill, the king. Power Drill? Yes, sir. I see. All right, well, you have put it. You have put yourself out there and. I have many songs, you know, mm. many, many songs. I can do two or three albums because I was a sound system singer. I can sing dub plays and I can sing many things. I can sing in the dance hall and I can sing on stage with the band. Well, there's nothing, technically speaking, there's nothing to stop you from singing. So one sure way of keeping your name out there and. Putting, yeah, but, uh, because, you know, I lose my sight. You understand? That's the problem. Okay. What's that? Because I lose my sight. I'm not able to see. Yeah, well, Stevie Wonder is still not able to see. And the place where I reside now, you know? I was reside somewhere else. It would be okay. Mm. Well, it's not Yeah, well, maybe you're referring then to your current, your current situation. Yes, yes, sir. So it's what? It's not. It's not habitable. No, no. I, I mean, it's okay, you know, but do what I want. Understand that kind of thing, you know. The singing business or the producing thing, you know. Mm. I would have to go in a different area to really get to use that. I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, still, uh, this is something that you apparently love and enjoy. And yeah, man, I love to sing, man. I tell you, man, I, mm -hmm. I sing, I sing in the studio, man, and I sing all around. I was, I, I, I open show for a lot of artists in Jamaica, you know. No mention, take the eyes out. Yellow yeah, man, the whole back of them. Hold a moment, please. One moment. You're listening to Power 106 FM. The time is now 4.30. Join us weekdays from 6 to 8 p.m. for Power Play, Power 106 FM's flagship program dedicated to the world of sports. Hey, welcome to another edition of Power Play. My name is Cliff Williams. Power Play with Cliff Williams, focusing on everything sports in Jamaica and around the world. Make sure to tune in to Power Play, providing invigorating sports analysis and discussion. Weekdays from 6 to 8 p.m. on Power 106 FM and the Power 106 FM app. Randy Williams, who is in uh, Fort de France in Martinique, he's uh, uh, telling us about. Fort de France, Martinique, and sharing some pictures with us as well. So let's see what he's been saying. This is Randy Williams in Fort de France, Martinique. He says, well, right. So he was telling us that for the uh, island, he's island hopping. So he's in Fort de France today. A little French would help, he says. He says, not much English is spoken here. Good afternoon. And uh, Randy Williams says, Martinique. Inez Ayona Campbell says, good afternoon, everyone. I'm late, just coming from a behavioral class for my job. Uh, Randy Williams says, very peaceful island, easy to get around. The market and downtown areas, no issues walking around. Well, I remember being in the, the back of a pickup in Martinique and being being shown around. That was refreshing. And let's see. So Charlton Chance, who is in, he's a member of the Dint Hill High School, Dint Hill Technical High School, Past Students Association, Florida chapter. He says, howdy, Mr. Malcolm. Howdy, Charlton Chance. Randy Williams says, I jumped on the local bus for a one-hour ride, 
forget the experience. Very mountainous as well, he says. And Randy Williams says, the food is not as good as Jamaica. And uh, Lady Jean in Monique St. Anne says, quietly listening all the time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Lady Lady Jean in Monique St. Anne. Thank you very much for your company here on both sides of the story, Poro 106 FM. Good afternoon to Orinthia as well. Here's a call coming through from uh, a listener in North Carolina. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? Can you hear me clearly? Yes, hearing you clearly. I found out something that was so profound um, today. It brought tears to my eyes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, this might not mean much to, to many people, but you know, when you're in the diaspora, you come across different people and you start to question deeply. Even though I know that I'm a Dominican, but you know, start to question deeply. Who you are, you know, where Hold on. I want to give you an opportunity. I mean? Want to give you an opportunity to go there, but sorry, just hang on a moment. Let's just go back to the caller who had been holding before. Sorry about that. So if you could okay, just okay. stay on your line, but we'll have to disconnect. No problem. I'll 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 be here. Mm. All right. So we're not we're not able to get that the Okay, let's let's go to the 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 caller, the blind caller. Yes, hello. Yes, sir. hello. Yes, so you were calling some names of uh, Gregory Isaacs and Yellowman. Ha yes. Have other members of the musical fraternity reached out to you? No, sir. They, they don't reach out. You know, so I don't know. You know. Do you know any of them? Yeah, man, I, I know enough of them, man, but they're living in Kingston. I live there in the West Malaya. A lot of them, I open show for them at Root Bamboo. Yeah, you know, and all those places, you know, MXG and a lot of places I open show for them. So right now, all you need is a good producer. Yeah, I see. I see. That's all I need. I have the sound. And what's your stage name again? Power drill. Yes, sir. I see what you mean. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So, so anything you, you hear about it, you, you can Well if if, if there's up. if you have piqued anyone else's or anyone's interest, yes, sir. uh we will we will uh we will let you know if if there's anyone who would like to get in touch with you. So listeners, it's a Jamaican artist who goes by the moniker Power Drill. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we'll see. Good luck. As you try to find a producer. Yes, sir. My respect. Respect to you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Yes, Let's go now to the listener from North Carolina. Hello, good afternoon. Thanks for calling. And thanks for holding the line. Go ahead, please. So my grandmother, she's 101 years old and she's about to be 102 in um in June. Oh my goodness, Long, longevity runs in your family. Absolutely. No, she has two um, scars on both cheeks, like an X scar on both cheeks, you know? Mm -hmm. From she was at, so she said that her, her father gave, gave her those marks, um, as well as one of her cousins. Um, her dad, which is my grandmother's uncle, also gave the cousin that same markings. You know, so I was curious and um, I did some research. Mm -hmm. And actually, that kind of, those marks were given 
locate during the transatlantic slave trade and it was passed down. That's what I mean? Yes. So basically, her daddy, now she's 102 almost now, so imagine her grandfather would have probably been a slave proper. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when I trace those markings, it went back to a tribe in Nigeria called Yoruba. Yoruba. That's what I mean? Yes, Yoruba tribe in, in um in Nigeria. So they gave their, their kids um that kind of mark in during the slave trade. And I'm saying my grandmother was like a slave in a but you know what I mean? It was passed down generation. Mm -hmm. And um, so that they can identify them if they should meet them again on the other side of slavery or wherever. You know what I mean? Yes, so yes. To me that was so profound and it was so touching to me to know that at least I know where so part of my ancestry came from. You know what I mean? There about, it might not yes. mean much to some people, yes. but to me, it, it brought tears it's, to my eyes. Yes, you know and I mean? it, it has obviously struck a chord with you. Yes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in these times when, you know, we struggle to find who we are, you know what I mean? So yes. I just wanted to share that, you know, because a lot of people think like they might have similar experiences or might have a grandparent who might have some of those marks. You know, by asking yes. the right questions and in the right research, a connection can be made. You know what I mean? True. So that's what I wanted to share. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm a listener most of the time. You know what I mean? So yes. I'll continue to listen. Thank, right. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. This is your program, Both Sides of the Story, Power 106 FM, still streaming live on the Gleaners website, go-jamaica.com. Barbara Fagan says, good, good evening, still afternoon here in Jamaica. Good afternoon, Barbara Fagan. And she says, Mr. Malcolm, remember you have the blind man on the line waiting. Oh, yes. We eventually came back to him. And he had his opportunity to share his talent. We wish him well. As we continue with more on both sides of the story, Lady Jean says she's quietly listening all the time. Good afternoon, Lady Jean. That's good to know. Thank you very much. We're trying to keep up with you. All right, we have some more messages to clear for the time being. Miss June in Oslo, Norway, says, Vordan, gardet met dag. Daget met dag. We'll have to have her pronounce it for us. Vorden, vorden gardet met dag. Hmm. And, yes, I have to learn this language as well. Norwegian. Uh, David Crossburn, good afternoon to you. We see your missed call. Feel free to call again or try again. Franklin McDonald is at it again. He's sharing with us information on the 1902 eruption of Mount Pele. Good afternoon, Franklin McDonald. Kevin Galloway is in touch with us as well. This one says, greetings, Brother Dervan. Can you please repeat the numbers for the immigration office? I'm afraid, I don't know, off the top of my head. Let's see if I can, or let's, let's check this device here and see if we have it here. Uh, quickly, contacts. And here's a name that is easy to find because it is unusual so i'm trying to find that number 954-963-8555 954-963-8555 what about the local number let's see what we have here local number hmm. all right uh, Give us, give us a call if you're able to, and uh, we will send you one of these numbers. 
Uh, here's Miss Herman, Miss June, who is in Oslo, Norway. Hello, Miss June. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. I was just teasing you and making joke with you. That's all right. That's fine. I say food and go, they may die. I was just asking you, how are you doing? Yes. And what am I supposed to yeah. what am I supposed to respond with? What what should I say in response? You can do it. You can say chat, you can say they go bra. They go bra. Uh, you can, you know, okay. I mean if you are okay. All right, they go bra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so that was just I was just making joke with you. Because I'm here busy doing my little things. I'm having birthday in a couple of hours time, eight of March. <laughs> So I'm a little busy having fun with myself. That's a special day to celebrate a birthday. It's International Women's Day tomorrow. That's your day. Yeah, yeah. in two hours time now, is on time my birthday started. So I'm just having a little fun with myself. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, now I'll take it easy. But I have one only one thing I'm going to say before I go. Uh -huh. You see... I listen to Jamaican people all over the world, America, Jamaican. We complain about the food gone up, the gas gone up, the price. It's the same here everywhere, you know, darling. Yes. The food double, the food double, the gas price double, the house rent double. People leaving the city, selling their home in the city, move to more little rural area to get more for their money. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Miguel. All right. That's all, I have to, that's all I have to say. Yes, well said. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. This is your program, Both Sides of the Story, Power 106 FM, still streaming live on the Gleaners website, go-jamaica.com. There's more after the break. You're listening to Power 106 FM. The time is now. 45. Power 106 FM, the digital sound, and now reaching you in more ways. Listen to us on 106.1 to 106.9 on the FM band. You can also listen to us on the Power 106 FM app, which you can download on the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. You can tune in on your mobile phones by dialing 631-359-8281 if you're in the U.S., and if you're in the UK, you can dial 0330-606-0953. Plus, listen to us on onespotmedia.com and the OneSpot Media app, or log on to go-jamaica.com. Power 106 FM, where all views can contend, giving you powerful talk radio in so many ways, on air and online. Que hora es en español? Son las cinco menos catorce. Que la retil en francés les cinq heures moins quatorze. Siente tiran le wu dian cha shi si fen. Fourteen minutes to five o'clock in the afternoon here at Broadcast House. 32 Lindhurst Road, Kingston 5, St. Andrew, Jamaica. Have you had a checkup lately? If not, now is a good time. Let's not wait till we get sick to get a checkup. How about that? Have you done your homework yet? If not, now is a good time. Good afternoon to all the schoolers listening to us, all the students from the early childhood level to the secondary level. Trust you had a productive day of learning. Hope you also managed to get in some physical activity, just as important as mental activity. As we always say, young people, socialization makes you educable. Education makes you trainable. Training makes you employable. And the right attitude makes you successful. Homework time, young people, at 13 minutes to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Good afternoon to all working Jamaicans tuned in to both sides of the story here on Power 106 FM. As we continue, 
We have a few messages to read for you. This one from Horace, otherwise known as Spider, who says, Good afternoon, Mr. Malcolm. It seems as if it takes a shake-up of an election to shake up a stubborn government. Seems as if they are going to finally change the police chief. What about the Minister of Security? Is the PM planning to change him too? But with all these changes, is it too late for the government? Seems as if it takes light years for the message to reach the government or an election. Thank you for your message, Horace, otherwise known as Spider. Here's another one. This one says, good day to you, Sir Malcolm. I don't think the government is serious about the high level of crime and violence in this country. The police are given basket to carry water, Mr. Malcolm. Every day, the police trying to dismantle gangs by hauling them before the courts, while the homes and communities from which they come remain the factories that keep manufacturing them indirectly. Each year, a number of students graduate from high school. What percentage made it to the tertiary level? What percentage achieved gainful employment? And what percentage remains in the community rubbing out their palms, their hand middle, as we say, with nothing productive to do? This needs to be seriously looked at, Sir Malcolm. Indeed, we must. And it is sad to see so many more young people invariably from time to time at different spots, not just in the corporate area, but elsewhere across the country who have lost it for whatever reason. We don't know their story from a distance, but it's really sad to see so many young people essentially giving up on life very early. Oh dear, we trust they will eventually find their way back home. Franklin MacDonald with another of his links. This one is looking at the Yoruba tribal marks, which connects with the, the call that we got earlier on from a listener hearkening back to the days of his ancestors and feeling reconnected with those two stars imprinted on either side of his family member's face. That's the Yoruba tribal marks. That's what that is all about. Winnie Anderson Brown says, good afternoon, Dervan. Could you please ask the gentleman who says he can sing if he has ever reached out to the Jamaica Society for the Blind? I think we asked, I think we might have broached the subject when we spoke with him uh, some time ago. But anyway, if not, he can begin there, she says. So that's to the the blind caller who is who tells us he is a singer and a well-known one too. Power Drill is his moniker, his stage name. Uh, Winnie Anderson Brown says, I would love to follow up with him. But of course, we'll be only too happy to to connect you both. More than happy to oblige. All right. So we'll 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 talk further, Winnie Anderson Brown. Cuban in Georgia says, Good afternoon, Sir Malcolm. All emphasis must be placed on education and training. Education and training are the fastest ways to relieve our people out of poverty. It's it's get, something is missing here. 
get our young people engaged. Let's get our young people engaged and evening classes for the adults who want to further their education and get their high school diploma in order to meet the requirements of the training of the, for the workforce. Thanks for your message, Cuban in Georgia. Uh, this message now from Father Lee. Father Lee says, good day to you, Sir Malcolm. I don't think the government is serious about the high level of crime and violence. Yeah, we read this one already. We read that one already. Thank you very much, Father Lee, for the message. And Winnie Anderson Brown says, please do. I'm listening. As in, feel free to share her number. So we're saving this one and continuing to the other messages. Neville, otherwise known as Salah, says, Durban, I saw where it was reported that Mrs. Ma Mrs. Malahu Fort was has rented this building on Fairway Avenue for four and a half million dollars per month. Durban, you tell me if this go government under Andrew Holness has any heart. Patients have to be sleeping on the floor of the hospitals because of the locking, the locking of beds. Four and a half million for rentals per month, Durban. Durban, are you saying? Uh, no, that's what he said because he did not decide to buy. Okay, I can't help you with that one, Neville. Let's move on. Ellerid says, we ask the public to report what they know or they refuse to do because they may not believe what is taking place will allow to continue because the who who is in charge has no knowledge of the issue taking place. Can we talk some more about what is, what really is? Because what is, is. As opposed to something that might be just for, from the figment of somebody, somebody's mind. Uh, Travisa. Just a few minutes to go on today's edition of your program, both sides of the story, Poro 106 FM. Can we thank you once again for the privilege of serving you on yet another edition of your program, both sides of the story here on Power 106 FM. Natalie Winter says, bye Durban, take care of yourself. See you tomorrow. And you do likewise, Natalie, all the best. Can we thank you once again for the privilege of serving you on yet another edition of your program, Both Sides of the Story, for today, Thursday, the 7th of March, 2024. The moving finger writes and having writ moves on. Nor all your piety nor witch shall lure it back to cancel half a line. Nor all your tears wash out a word of it. All things being well, Both Sides of the Story returns tomorrow afternoon, 2 to 5. Till then, this is Dervan Malcolm reminding all of us that every day is an opportunity to do better than yesterday. Take care. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too hard to live, but I'm afraid 
to die. I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change won't come. Oh, yes, it will. I go to the movie and I go downtown. Somebody keep telling me no, don't hang on now. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Then I go to my brother and I say, and I say, brother, help me, please. But he wants nothing in me. to Pearl 106 FM. The time is now 5 o'clock. New, comprehensive, powerful, powerful, and credible. Power 106 FM now presents a simulcast of Radio Jamaica's News at 5. Bye.